Let's say that you've written and formatted an article in Microsoft Word or some other word processing application. You can then place it into an InDesign document and flow that text into multiple columns. And I'm going to show you how that works in this exercise. I'll start by creating a new document here inside of the welcome screen. And I'm going to go ahead and accept these settings that I've established in advance. Notice that the number of pages is set to 8. To create that new 8-page document, I'll just click on the OK button. To import the article from the word processor, go up to the File menu and choose the Place command. Then select your document. In my case, I'm working with an RTF or Rich Text Document file. If you're working along with me, select Formatted Document.RTF from the Exercise Files folder. To place the file, click the Open button. That loads your cursor with text, and that text that you're seeing on screen there, those are the first few words from my article. Now I'd move my cursor up to the upper left corner of the first column, and I'd click in order to fill that column with text. So InDesign automatically draws a text frame for me that exactly matches the size of my column. Notice this red plus sign down here in the lower right corner of the text block. We also have this error message down at the bottom of the window. If you double click on the error message, that brings up the pre-flight panel, and you would go ahead and use these arrows to expand this text message right here, and you're going to see you have something called overset text, also known as overflow text, meaning there's too much text to fit inside the frame, and there's some amount of story left over. Let's go ahead and close this pre-flight panel, and let me show you how to solve that problem. Go down here to this red plus sign and click on it, and then move your cursor up to the top of the next column, and click again. The text now flows from one column to the next and to see how it flows you can go up to the view menu and you can choose show text threads. And you now see this thread between the first column and the second column on the page. Let's keep flowing the text to the other pages by clicking on this plus sign again. Loads the cursor. I'll go ahead and press Alt page down or Option page down on the Mac in order to advance to the next page spread and I'll click in the first column of page 2 and I now have a thread that's linking the last column on page 1 to the first column on page 2. There's other ways to work. You can also click, for example, on that plus sign and drag inside of a column or outside the boundaries of the column if you want to in order to create a custom frame. If I click again on that plus sign and move my cursor lower in the column, I'll start the next frame at that location. There's also ways to automate this process. If I click on the plus sign to load my cursor and then I press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, notice that the top left corner of your cursor changes. And what this means is if I Alt click or Option click, I will both flow a column of text and reload my cursor like so. And I'll go ahead and Alt click or Option click again. Press Alt page down or Option page down on the Mac to move to the pages 4 or 5 spread. Then I would Alt-click or Option-click again to proceed. Another way to work is to press and hold both the Shift and Alt keys. And I want you to notice something down here at the bottom of the screen. Notice that we have no errors in this pre-flight area. So we have a green light. That's about to change. I'm going to press the Shift and Alt keys or Shift and Option on the Mac and click. And that goes ahead and places all of the story that will fit inside of this document. So if I go up to the Layout menu, and choose last page in order to advance to the last page of the